Morning guys, welcome back to Alan's allotment. Oh dear. Um, there was no videos last week. I wasn't feeling very well. Came down with an horrendous cold or something and it absolutely took me off my feet. And I'm, uh, I'm still very weak and tired after it. But we uh, got a course of antibiotics off the doctor and uh, feeling a lot better than we have been for a while, I can tell you that. So we haven't got a great amount done. But the first thing I'm going to tell you is, I've got the kettle on, and we're going to have a cup of coffee. But yesterday, we got rid of all of the pigeons. So all of the birds have now gone. There is no pigeons left at all. There was 34 birds in total. And I found somebody who would take them off my hands, job lot. So we let them all go and we gave them away. So they've gone to the new home yesterday. I had to drive about 50 miles out and another 50 miles back um, to get rid of the, the last of the birds. So uh, that's it, end of an error with the pigeons. They've all gone now, that'll lighten the burden slightly and it'll let me concentrate on just growing on, growing plants and things like that. So we're going to try and get a little bit done today and uh, we'll see what we manage. I'll bring you along. Alright guys, so we've uh, brought you down to the polytunnel now. What I've done is I actually planted uh, some lettuces out yesterday as well. And as you can see, we've had some slugs at them already. But I actually found the slugs. There was three slugs in here. And there was some bits of plastic uh, bag lying on the bottom here and a few other odds and ends and they were hiding under there. <clears throat> so we found them and then we watered the bed to see if we could illuminate any more. And I found three in total and we've got rid of those now. So fingers crossed these will now recover. There's only uh, five in this side here. At the same time we planted some uh, Lola Rossa ones uh, in here, so there's five Lola Rossa in here and they're coming along quite nicely and there's one dwarf kale there and then we've got three uh, best of all, uh, all year round lettuce and then we've got another three dwarf kale in there which seem to have taken okay. So we just give them another light uh, watering this morning. Um, we did come up through midweek <coughs> only to water these and these have started picking up and they're now starting to go into flower. We're going to look at trying to get these put into um, strawberry planters. Likewise with these, they are recovering. We'll end up checking those, uh, taking those out of the pots and getting them repotted as well guys the garlic's doing really nice shouldn't be long till that's ready now um, even if we eat it green as they call it uh, which is straight fresh out of the ground we should be able to start harvesting some of this shortly so uh, yes that's some more seeds planted out and another tray of uh, seedlings moved on right guys we're all in the growing area now and the first thing you'll notice is we now have another protection cage. So I've got the plastic on that and we've got the uh, Envira mesh on the lid. And again, thanks to Steve from Greenside up for his uh, inspiration on this one, I'd uh, seen these on Steve's uh, channel and I decided I was going to make myself some of these. So what happened midweek? Uh, last week, I mean, it's been two weeks since I put up a video now. The first week I was really ill. Yes, the following week I was managed to get up. That was the week we had a lot of gales up here. And as I dreaded, the wind had taken this and threw it over here somewhere. And as a result of that, we lost one of the cabbages. But not to worry. As you can see, the rest of them are all coming along really, really well in here now the other five and then I'd called into Morrison's 
and we got some uh, broad beans in a tray for two quid. So I put three in that space where we lost that cabbage. The onions are starting to pick up in between here now. They're a bit slow, but they are getting going and they're established now. And then into this bed here, I've planted some cauliflowers also that I got from Morrison's because mine is still only this big. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six in here. And um, I can see I'm getting a little bit of damage on them already. Hopefully they're going to get established before they get any worse. But then I pop, popped in the other three cells of broad beans in between here as well, guys. This bed is still empty at the moment. The potatoes are now starting to poke up. And I think we're past our last frost yet, but I'm not 100% certain. But as you can see, all the potatoes are starting to pop up now. I'm just starting to show the head. So hopefully the timing has just been right with that. I have to keep an eye on the weather. Uh, and if it does forecast any frost, then we're going to have to get up here and throw a bit of fleece over or something. So what I've also just done now is I've just filled up this bed here. And what we've done is we've planted um, Charlotte second earlies from here across here and we've put 15 seed potatoes in and then we've got the kestrel on that side and we've got 12 seed potatoes in there sorry if you're getting a bit of wind back on this guys but uh, there's just a little bit of a breeze up hopefully it's not too bad you can see these strawberries in this strawberry bed are all coming along really really well now and we've got lots of uh, spring onions if we want them now, which I might just harvest before I go. Um, they're volunteers from last year, so we might just harvest those as spring onions. This bed still follow, but all this uh, garlic here is also coming along really well. And there's a little bit of weed coming up here and there in between here now, which I need to get on top of. I made a little start and done a little area here. Uh, yeah, apple trees just starting to leaf, some of them. Some of the dwarf apple trees that we've had many years just starting to leaf out. Again, we cut them back severely, so they're taking a while to get re-established again now. Uh, but we did get apples off this one last year and I can see it's flowered again already. As long as the, the, the bullfinches don't come and nip these off, which they tend to do. There's actually quite a bit of flower on this one this year. No flower on this one yet. And I have me out to kill this one, but just about. Because I cut this back severely because of uh, brown rot last year. And like that. I've got some copper sulphate to spray these with. Um, I'll probably get that done sometime this week with a bit of luck. You can see one of the little dwarf here. I think it's a golden delicious, this one. A little dwarf. And it's starting to flower as well. On almost every branch. We have another dwarf apple here. Uh, it has a foreign label on it, so I'm not sure what variety it will be. And another dwarf apple there. Then we have another dwarf apple here, which is John of Gold, I'm led to believe. And it looks like we're getting some flower on this. And there. And then we've got the little bush cherry. And we've got another dwarf apple here, which is three varieties on one, but it... Yeah, so you can see the different colours in the foliage. And we've even got a bit of bloom on one of these. And as you can see, it's just a little stick. I'll have to be careful of that because if all those turn into apples, I'm going to have to take them off uh, down to one perhaps because that will snap otherwise. But it looks like we may get either that's either new leaf or some flower. We don't know on that one. But that's a three variety tree. This side here hasn't actually taken this, it's, it's obviously died back. 
although this is part of this one here and the secondary branch which doesn't appear to be doing anything but this this bit here is took so that's that the turnips are definitely established but you can see they are getting some damage in there guys even with the net on they are still getting some damage in there again we've got more garlic all coming along nicely uh, we weeded that bed but we still need to get in that one and weed it these are the beetroots this bed seems to stay really damp a lot and for some reason it was great last year but for some reason these are only slow but it has been cold and windy I suppose but as you can see some of these leaves are a bit yellow perhaps as a result of the amount of rain we've had and although down south the basking in sunshine and hottest day of the year it's pretty cool and uh, dull up here the multi sown beetroot is also coming along but the onions seem to be faring much better and then last but not least we got some more plants planted into the greenhouse tree house and you'll see we've got some more lettuces in here so we've got all year all year round I think they are or yeah then a Lola Rossa all year round Lola Rossa and we've alternated these ones and uh, they seem to have got established crimson bonfire peaches we still haven't got pl planted into the other polytunnel yet but perhaps we'll get that done shortly peach lost all its flower now we don't know we'll have to wait and see whether any fruit actually develops on that I don't know whether they got pollinated or not and I didn't hand pollinate this year just because I wasn't well and then in here we've got six more dwarf curly kale so it's just making use of giving me that little bit of extra growing space in here guys I don't know how well they're going to do but yeah let's just wait and see we've now got a bit of leaf on this uh, peach tree that we bought from Morrison's you can see we stocking topped it down this height to give it room to grow uh, but we're going to try and keep it semi-dwarf this lemon tree um, it's still not looking too good in here and we'll give it a little bit longer although we have got some new growth here we'll wait and see what happens but it's the leaves are still curling and it's looking a bit pale uh, and all this bed looks really dry as you can see it's not from that good soaking it may just be that it's still a bit too wet and it needs to dry back a bit more the apricot nothing at all no leaf on this at all bit surprised at that when the other apricot is already in full leaf unless it's to do with the two different types I don't know and the better looking peach tree here has no leaf either although it does appear that it is still alive because these branches are flexible and soft supple so we'll just wait a bit longer I don't know whether the two different breeds but I don't think they are but yet the orange is doing positively well and you can see a massive amount of flower coming on this orange tree so it seems to be positively loving it in there and again the bed looks really dry but as you can see guys it's not So we don't want to go over I can be tempted to water that and think it needs water when it really doesn't so I'm trying to keep this side semi dry um, but obviously the lettuces and the kales will need occasional drinks so for now that's just about it guys right, right guys with the rest of the day I've basically just taken my time with the hand mower doing a little bit at a time and getting the grass cut. Got the Jack grandchildren coming up uh, to the allotment on um, Bank Holiday Monday for an Easter egg hunt again. 
like they did last year. We'll just hide some packets of sweeties around the allotment and let them go and find them. So the grass was looking a bit untidy and getting a bit long, a few weeds, dandelion, dock leaves, etc. So I basically decided we would just cut the grass, take me time, and just do a little bit of time, stopping regularly and uh, having breaks. So we've got that done, that's a good job jobbed. Uh, these are our two uh, trial cabbages in the pots, looking positively well. And it looks like they are now starting to make a heart so in here. Know. Still got these few seed potatoes sitting here. These were the first earlies. And that's what's left of the Kestrels and the Charlottes down there. Been keeping a, a, an eye on the trees. I think I might have been over watering these. They're looking a little bit pale. So we'll back off on that. I was scattering of seeds with the Swiss chard. We didn't put loads in, but that's probably somewhere near about what I did put in there. So the germination's not bad. The leeks are just starting to pop up. A bit sporadic at the moment. The pak choy have came up. They're the five cauliflowers. I've potted those on into bigger pots now to see if we can bring them on. And then in here, we have some grafted aubergine that arrived in the mail midweek. And these are um, Scorpio, aubergine grafted Scorpio. Um, I put them into these pots, they came in, uh, I actually planted some more, the last, there was, I put three left, but there was actually four of the uh, tomatoes left there, the Crimson Crush. I don't know what it is, I can't get tomatoes to germinate. Um, I, I always struggle with tomatoes, however, I've just looked in here now, and it does look like these Crimson Crush that are planted are now just starting to pop up. I don't know whether I'm keeping them too wet, not wet enough, whatever. Uh, but the other stuff we planted, the aubergines and the uh, market more cucumbers, as yet no sign of those, but the onions are doing positively well that we've transplanted into here. And then there's just three dwarf kale left there. Right, give you a final round up in the shed and then we're off home for something for some food. Right guys, just have my final cup of coffee and then we're gonna make up our way home. It's three o'clock now in the afternoon. Came up here about nine o'clock this morning, but I've just been pottering and doing little bits. And I've actually got quite a lot done in considering. Hopefully you're still with me. Uh, today's video has been a little bit of a lengthy one, just because we haven't done one for a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm not going to babble on much longer. I just want to say thanks again for all your likes, dislikes, comments and your subscriptions. If it's your first time here, think about it in the subscribe button down below. Select the, select the little icon, uh, bell icon, select all. And that will alert you every time I put up a new video. Of course it's free to subscribe to the channel. For now guys, wherever you are in the world, please stay safe. And be practical. Keep yourselves out of arms way. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you again in the next video.